Welcome back. Uh, we're going to help you become a master anteater. You don't have to believe every stupid thing you think. Um, so important. If you want to feel better fast, I want you to carry around these three little words. Is it true? Um, but first, you want to read a testimony. I do. Uh, so this is from Hot Stuff Something sh Hot Something. <laughs> okay. From Canada. <laughs> from Canada. Hot Stuff. Hot Stuff Something. <sighs> Dr. Daniel Amon and Tana Amon are my favorite people. That's why I chose this one, just because they said this. <laughs> A little drip of dopamine. A little drip of dopamine. I love and admire them very deeply and was thrilled when I heard they were starting a podcast. They are a delight to listen to, and their message about, the, about brain health is something that's so important to spread. Our society doesn't yet look at brain health as much as we should and recognize that it's a large factor in explaining our behavior and our problems. We recognize the other three circles that Daniel explains, which are the psychological, social, and spiritual components, and those are all very important. But we often miss the biological component when we are trying to understand behavior. As Daniel puts it, our brain is the hardware of the soul. I love that. It's important to take care of our brain and body so that we can feel better, so we can better serve God while we are here. I got the message loud and clear. I hear you. I get you. I love you guys so much. I recommend this podcast to anybody. It is great. Thank you so much. I love that. That just gave me goosebumps. I know. It's awesome, right? I wonder if goosebumps and dopamine go together. Probably. They probably do. They probably do. So we're in our Feel Better Fast uh, series. And there's a whole section in the book on rational mind. And, if, and, and I find so many people I know in my family, uh, for my patients, employees, that no one has ever taught them how to discipline yeah. their mind. I mean, you can. I can drug your brain into submission. I'm actually pretty good at it. But, but I don't want to just do that. I want you to learn the Skills. tools, the techniques, the little tiny habits, the mm -hmm. smallest thing you can do today. That will make the biggest difference. So in this podcast, we're actually going to talk about the ants, the ant species. So what are all the ways we mess ourselves up? by the kinds of negative thoughts we have. So one of the things I want to say about as we go into this, and some of you are going, well, wait, you guys have done ants before. But you're going to do it a slightly different, so stick with us. Stay with us through the series. Oh, no, people need to hear it So over, Right, over so when I was again. doing, uh, when I listened to Love and Logic for Chloe, um, I, I was having trouble with parenting, and I ordered this um, parenting program, which literally changed my life with her, my relationship, and just has been amazing. She's like... Which is why we've had them on the podcast many times. Oh my God, I just, I love that program. But I literally for a year drove around with that program in my DVD player that tells you how long it's been, but in my DVD player and I listened to it nonstop for a year and just kept replaying it because it's, those are, it takes time for it to become habit, right? So I would do really well with her. And then when it started to not work, when she started to act up again, I would realize, oh, it's because I'm not integrating it right now. So I would listen to it again. So you really do need to hear this. Right, and I think the reason I like doing it a lot is it helps me. Well, and... It helps me not have negative thoughts. Because when you're trying to change the world, like we are, you get attacked and your thoughts can become distorted. And see one, do one, teach and one. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, and actually um, I wrote a kid's book about this mm -hmm. called Captain Snout and the Superpower Questions. And I'm so thinking with the political turmoil oh my God, in this I'm country so that both sides are filled with ants. And these negative thoughts are driving, um, you know, they, they drive. But it's very mobs. sad. We have they more. They drive negative behavior. And so. We have more in common so than So let's talk don't. about the seven different kinds of ants. Yes. And the first one is all or nothing ants. That's where things are all good or all bad. Mm -hmm. And it's where we're like Black the or white. historic party, political party, or you demonize right. people. And what I've learned through the brain imaging work that we do, the world is totally gray. Plus, on a test. So you know you're doing all or nothing thinking. Right. Whenever you think in words like, 
always, always, never, every time, every one. And if you remember in college, right. whenever they asked you a test, this is always this way. 99% of the time. Just mark it false. Right. Right, because there are just so very few absolutes in the world, except I absolutely love you. And if I mess up, you'll absolutely right. kill me. Yes. Right. So those are absolutes. <laughs> if that was on the test, you I could would go mark correct. That one <laughs> World's <laughs> smallest handcuffs. <laughs> She's pointing to my wedding ring. Um, but whenever you have those thoughts, for example, Tana never listens to me. Um, complete nonsense. Is that true? Total and complete nonsense always. <laughs> right. But, but when you have a thought, even if it's not true, like that one's not true. Right. When you have a thought, if you don't question it, right. you believe it yes. 100% and then you act as if it's true. Mm -hmm. So those are all or nothing ants. And then we have the just the bad ant where, and you see this totally in this political climate, they focus on one thing mm -hmm. that may have happened 20 years ago um, and they escalate the negative thing right. and exclude all the positive things. Right, and both sides do it. And it's just, um, and they forget the fact that we have more in common together than we don't. So it just, it's very annoying. But um, I work on this one a lot with people that I've coached, and it's like w something really bad, truly horrible, could happen to someone. But that person has played it over thousands of times in their mind, right? And so, and this, this is hard to say to someone who's been traumatized. But the one who made me really help, who helped me with this was Byron Katie. When she said, okay, I understand that this thing happened to you. It was terrible. This person did a terrible thing to you. But you've done it to you thousands of times. Right. By they allowing did it yourself to replay and it. People who've replayed the trauma over and over and over. And she looked at me and she said, who's worse to you? Who's meaner to you? And I like, at first I was angry. And then I went, oh, wow, that's like powerful. I was being worse to myself. So it's a powerful thing because it puts you in control. It puts you in control. Another example of just the bad, if I gave a talk, um, so I was in Vancouver, Canada recently and talked to hundreds of people and say, for example, someone up front fell asleep mm -hmm. during my talk. Oh, this is powerful for me too. <laughs> this happened to me. And so I get a standing <laughs> ovation at the end. This person's But not my mind focuses right. on the one who fell asleep. I must be boring. And so... Where do you bring your attention? Do you bring your attention to the standing ovation or do you bring the attention to the person that fell asleep, even though they have been up, may have been up the night before? Right, to I get mean, there to see you. <laughs> because, you know, they had a sick husband or they had a sick child. And that and might they be why they sleep. like was up all night there to get to see you. But I have one that's great with this. So I was speaking one time and this woman is in the front row and I'm like making eye contact with people and she was making me so nervous. She was actually, she was like disrupting me because she's giving me dirty looks. I mean, she's seriously you dirty were looks. allowing her Absolutely. To make so you. I was like <laughs> feeling really like disturbed by it. And then finally I was getting like irritated. So now I'm just like, okay, forget you. And I'm like, so I'm like <laughs> giving it back to her a little bit so that I didn't get sort of like flustered. And so I'm like, whatever. And so I'm like looking at everybody else and I'm like sort of annoyed with her. This whole thing, she's just like really like just glaring at me. And so I don't understand. I'm like, what did I say that was so offensive to her? But it's always, the whole time it's playing in my head. So I just completely ignore her. She doesn't talk to me at the end. She contacts me after the event and was like, I completely loved everything you said. I need you to speak at my event. I was totally absorbed. I, I was floored. That was just her way of paying attention. <laughs> I was like, that taught me never, ever try to read people like that. Well, we're going to talk about mind reading. And, right. And sometimes the, these ants get mixed up. Right, they mate with other ants. Right, and you end up. With but you can't mixed always read people. Nationality ants. Right. Um, guilt beatings. That is where you think in words like should, must, ought. I'm so good at shooting to. all over myself. Yes, you, you can't. Are. No, I'm you really good at it. Exactly. You can't take that one away from me. <laughs> 
But guilt is not. I'm very clear about what people should do. <laughs> a helpful motivator. So, I mean, your mother went to Catholic school. Yeah. I went to Catholic school. And she passed school. it on to me. And so I often tease people I had to pass guilt 101, guilt 102, advanced guilt. And then I realize it's not helpful. And then I realized, what was it? In the book of Genesis, God said, you should not go to the tree of knowledge. The and the next first thing, thing they did. Is that they're at the tree of knowledge. And I'm like, no. What God should have said is if you go to the tree of knowledge, we're kicking you out of the Garden of Eden. And you're going to die a painful death. <laughs> and she is going to have to wear clothes. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously, what is the matter Because if with he you? would have said that, he, when she tried to get him to do it, because she's the one that really? tempted him, he'd like, no, I'm not going to the tree. <laughs> you're just... So, you, so there's, should see, is there not See, there is something helpful. seriously wrong with you. Oh, so many things. <laughs> right? Why do you think I'm a psychiatrist, right? I'm fixing stuff constantly. But um, should isn't helpful. Because when you think you should do something, right. it makes you feel bad, so you don't do it. Well, and we're so I want you to get rid of the words should and go... Well, your whole life I you were programmed to. to rebel against your parents, against whatever, teachers, and so you instantly... Well, and so many of my patients, their four-year-old right, selves... Right, exactly. ...live. They're in control. Right. Or the two-year-old self, which is no, no way, never, you can't make me do mm -hmm. it. They are, they're still running your life. So I just want you to replace should with, well, it's my goal. It fits I want to. what I want. So, for example, if I think to myself, I should go see my mom and dad. Um, you know, they're 86 and 89. And, well, I won't see them because it makes me feel bad. But if I replace, I should go see them with I want to go see them with it fits my goal to have a close relationship with them. I don't know how much longer I'm going to have them. I really want to spend time. Then in a heartbeat, I am there. Well, that's so the it's same just thing. changing how you think. And that's the same thing, you know, like with Chloe when you know she's 15 so she's she is better than the, her attitude is better than 99 percent of 15 year olds i know but she's 15 so every now and then she gets this little snippiness or whatever and i start to go back to my old ways of like you know yeah no k cut it and i get like really frustrated and i but because now i stop myself stuff. well and i just it irritates me so i get that because like really quick of the sh right. shooting all over yourself right and so but now because of a lot of work I've done, like a tremendous amount of work and listening to it over and over and over, I stop myself for a second and I'm like, okay, if I say that, like, how is it going to help me? Does it fit the what, goal what is my you goal? have in your relationship with her? Right. We're like this and she listens to what I say and she she respects what I say. She's not in trouble because we are close. Right. Like, how is I that going to help? I think your natural tendency without oh, psh, this training. Stop it. Is, <laughs> cut it off at the you, knees. You can be harsh. Oh yeah, cut it off and, at the knees. And that's not who you really no, are. I don't want it with you. So I don't want it with her. This training has been so important. Yeah. It has so decreased my stress. <laughs> the next one is labeling. That is where you label yourself or someone else with a negative term. He's a nerd. She's a brat. He's a jerk. I'm an idiot. Clown. Right. And um, I grew up with this in my house. And now it's, you're a Democrat. Or well, you're and a I, I grew up with this in my house, like 24-7 going on. You know, my stepfather was a redneck, career military, and I would walk in. See, I just labeled him. But I would walk in the house, <laughs> and this was going on from morning till night with the news, with his... with his. We all, we all label people. But it's so you grow up with it, you and you carry it on, it. and you have to learn. As a nurse in the, in the ICU, what labels did you have for patients? Oh, well, we weren't allowed to, like, label them as far as... We would get in trouble if we said anything about their backgrounds, but we did say things like they're gorked or they're vegetables or... <laughs> like, that was really bad, but, but we couldn't say anything about them as far as, like... I, grew, I was in a Christian college, so... But as nurses, like, behind the scenes... Oh, I went to Christian medical school, but when I got to Walter Reed... I mean, the labels they'd have for patients, um, 
you know, one was Gomer, get out of my emergency room. Um, yeah, mean, those types of things. Because it's whenever no, 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 you we would, label... But, but we had worse ones for psychiatrists. So, just FYI. <laughs> like what? We didn't like the psychiatrists. Other than to get our vitamin H, which is held all when someone was climbing out of bed. So what labels did you have? <laughs> we just for... thought you guys were insane, all of you. <laughs> so... Well, there is some truth to that. Um, whenever you label someone, you lump them mm -hmm. with all of the people you've ever known who right. have that label. And you can't deal with them individually. No, you demonize. And that almost cost me my marriage. Because when Tana first found out I was a psychiatrist, she almost canceled her first right, date with me. Yeah. Because, because she of that. didn't want to be analyzed, even though she desperately needed <laughs> to be analyzed. <laughs> and the truth is we're all analyzing. We're all constantly analyzing. Right? We're all constantly judging, whether it's for discernment or whether it's, you know, because you're harsh. Constantly partially. labeling. Right. But you have I'm, to catch yourself. Whether that homeless person is an alcoholic, right. I'm not going to give them money to support their habit. And I like Pastor uh, um, McPherson when he was on the show. He's like, look, it's not about, he's like, you're lying to yourself if you say that you're not racist or you're not judgmental. The, the, the goal is to recognize it and sort of transform it, right? It's not to say you're not because we all do it. It's more to know you're doing it and turn it into something more positive and recognize it and, and do something with it that you can, that isn't harmful, right? I, I forget how he said it. He, you should listen to the podcast. It was beautiful. Um, it was absolutely amazing how he said it. So when we come back, we're going to talk about a couple of other different kinds of ants and how to get rid of them. Stay with us. Use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or on our supplements at brainmdhealth.com. Thank you for listening to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. Go to iTunes and leave a review and you'll automatically be entered into a drawing to get a free signed copy of the Brain Warriors Way and the Brain Warriors Way cookbook we give away every month.